Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to an AP remake of the first ever LAN game on Dota 6.82. It's a brave new world, as I was mentioning earlier, but the picks remain largely the same. I'm LD, your host, and I'm joined here today by Cinderin. Cinderin, we were talking about this a bit uh, before the remake, but yeah, to, to make a long story short for the viewers who are watching the VOD, it just it's been pretty much the same picks. The only thing that we saw which was even slightly unusual was Lashrak's second pick, but... Yeah, the teams are basically playing this uh, drafting similar to how they would in 6.81. And I think the Lashrak they picked is actually even going to be played as a support. I think they'll put the Jakira in a core position, but we'll see when they uh, when they do assign the heroes here. Uh, hopefully hopefully the sound is fixed now. I, I was told that our sound in Dota TV sounded extremely robotic, so maybe it's not only the the voice issue we have with hearing other casters that we fixed, but maybe the quality of the sound is, is really poor. Hopefully that's not the case, but... Yeah, let's have a let's have a look at the team. So it looks like for IG, it's going to be June playing the Centaur. So that's obviously in a position three. Then Ferrari will be playing Ember Spirit, most likely in the mid lane. Chuan and CH or Chisbug will be playing the support duo of Wen Venj and Lashrak, and that leaves Luo to be playing on the Jakiro. So it was a support Lash second pick. And with that, we have Newbie on the Radiant side. Banana will be playing your Sand King Moo, playing the Templar Assassin that puts Sangsheng onto Skyrath Mage. How onto Marana? And Rabbit onto the Tidehunter. For now, both teams defending their own jungle. Uh, Sin, one thing I wanted to just check. I don't know if you've had a chance to test this yourself or if you've heard anything about it, but my understanding um, is that Urn was changed to damage instead of HP removal. Does that mean it breaks refraction charges? Do you know? Because um, there is no much... HP removal in Dota 2 anymore. What is the refraction? Only damage instances of five or more damage. Yeah, so it should work. Okay, yeah, so... Yeah, it should trigger refraction with every proc. Beats, I mean, on top of that, there's already Liquid Fire, there's the Ember Spirit's Flame Guard, so it may not end up really being a big issue this game. Edict. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of damage over time, but... I'm, a I'm actually wondering if that's something that might get changed uh, by the frog, because on, on paper it seems like... I mean, do you remember when Lincoln's Spirit is no one would buy it because you could just break it with Medallion? That was a while ago, but... Yeah, that item used to never get picked, and it was one of those things that ultimately got changed, and Lincoln's later became a pretty popular pickup. So I'm wondering now, if this I, may I end up the same way. I would say in most cases, the new urn is probably better. Um, HP removal was nice in the sense that it went through BKB, so if you put urn on someone and BKB, the damage would still persist through, I believe. Uh, I don't think it removed the urn, but the pure damage uh, should make it uh, disable Blink Dagger, it should break Refraction Charges, etc. So Urn should be a more powerful item overall now, I think. Uh, we'll see if if it gets picked up more for that reason, but... I don't know how much we should read into it just yet in this game, because when you look at the draft, it seems like the teams aren't really thinking too much about the new version, so... Maybe they won't itemize any differently either. Yeah, I'm wondering if we're going to see different kind of activity. The first few 6.82 games I played, I was like, Oh wait, you should always check the rune no matter what, even if your teammates already spotted one at the other lane, and... In general, it seems like players kind of were like learning the game, you know, over the course of that first match. And I'm wondering if we'll even see the pro players going through that process here. So those bounty runes, the, the double damages, and so forth should be should be interesting to see. I'm really curious to see what their initial reaction is if they try to secure one rune and give it to the mid laner, or if they go greedy and try for both. So the mid laner goes to one side and the supports to the other and the mid laner either gets the bounty or the other rune, or uh, the other way around, which means the supports will level up faster. Um, so I'm, I'm really curious to see how, how they address it. It at least looks like, let's see, there's a bounty rune up top, which will be taken by, by Moon. Newbie seems to care more about these runes than IG for now. IG really making no effort to go for either. Wait, so do you know, for the bounty rune, uh, the moment you get the golden experience, is that based on when you bottle it or when you use it? Because Mu is holding onto it right now, and there's kind of no point if it doesn't get better, right? I, I'm i not sure. I saw Arteezy just, just instantly using it when he was streaming earlier, but I don't, I don't actually... I would, my assumption would be just that it's whenever you use it, but I have no basis for that, so... Because <laughs> then it's technically better, better to, to just save wait. It, yeah. Unless you need you the bottle charges. Yeah, exactly. How will take a dual breath top lane. This could be trouble for him. He does have Leap to potentially disjoin an incoming stun, but Chuan's real close, and with the Leap baited out, this probably will be our first Blood Splitter to follow it up, and the first Blood of the first 6.82 land match will go the way of Team IG. Very well played. 
Yeah, Chisbug will be taking that. It's very important when you're playing Lishrak to get some sort of momentum early on if you're playing it in a support role in particular. This hero is awful at playing from behind. According With a bench Lesh duo, if they start getting up to level 3 and level 5 early on, they can pretty much kill every single hero on the map. Just the two of them, so... Yeah, it's a very potent duo, and, and even the TA with 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 uh, between the Ember Spirit and the Lashrac Edict and Flame Guard, you know, Refraction is not going to save you. Speaking of Refraction, uh, sometimes we will see TA players just max meld against Ember since you don't keep the defensive Refraction charges. But uh, for now, Mu, or at least take a second or third point early. But for now, Mu is just going for Refraction max. It looks like so focusing more on his mid game fighting. Yeah, this... Oh, oh, there's a disconnect from Rabbit. So we're going to have a little bit of a pause again, but... Overall, of course, IG with... Uh, I I don't know if it's fair to say they have the lead based on this first blood, because the gold is still going the way of the Radiant, just by virtue of getting better farm in both mid and the safe lane. And the bounty rune, don't forget that. And the bounty rune. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was the bigger part of it. It's like 50 gold in experience. <laughs> no, it's definitely so. not. It's but, just so satisfying to pick it up, even when you're losing. It just like makes your day better. Yeah, it, I'm I'm really curious to see how the mid lane develops in particular in this version. I think it's the one that's been changed the most, arguably. I know the side lanes, like the off lanes, are now more balanced out with the creep equilibrium starts. Uh, there's more pathways to use in the side lanes, but I just feel like mid lane will be affected the most by the bottle crow nerf, by the extra rune, uh, and just I think the gameplay will revolve more around fighting in mid, where until. Um, the version we had until this one, I feel like mid lane was a lot about bottle crowing, and then if you could gank the mid lane, you would just dominate by constantly bottle crow spamming your opponent with uh, with whatever hero you had. Uh, and now perhaps there's more comeback potential in the mid lane, is that fair to say? Because you can perhaps expect to, in most cases, get a rune even though you're behind on the lane, and then if you get a gank, the new, um, the new comeback mechanism in XP and gold gain means that if you get a turnaround kill on the mid lane, you're completely back in the lane. You might even be leading. Yeah, I mean, I think that comeback mechanic is more pronounced later on in the game since it has to do with the, the team's overall net worth, not just your own matchup, I believe. But um, that said, I, I think you you make a good point that in general, just the fact that there are two runes spawning, it's... Oh, the other thing that we should mention, Sin, is that the, the deny change. Denies are now more important than they used to be. Um, so I yeah, guess that, even more that could make it easier to snowball an advantage on the other side. And if you don't get that kill, then it may be even tougher to come back than it once was. Since your level progression will be very delayed. Um, but yeah, as far as bottle crowing, the speed burst duration has been reduced by a factor of 5 from 20 to 4. So basically bottle crowing is slower. It does move, The courier does move faster for those 4 seconds, but... Yeah, it's uh, the courier overall is also ADMS faster. But when it has an empty bottle, of course, a big oh, part actually, of that's true. Loss. I don't, I, I, I'm not sure what the yeah. That's one of those like you'll need to actually check the math, I guess, to see. It's thirty percent slower. Yeah, yeah. So okay, out of the extra eighty, it's going to lose thirty percent of that yeah. in addition to yeah, whatever. <laughs> It's still going to obviously be faster than the slow courier from before, but I think if you do the math, I haven't done it myself, but just intuitively from looking at the numbers, I think bottle crowing is definitely slower because of the short speed burst, which seems more like a mechanic to try and save the courier now rather than a transport mechanic. It's also maybe a little bit more gankable with the, the fact that we may see more courier killing in general, I'm, I'm thinking. with uh, just the It does have the higher move speed, but it's not... You know, hasted move speed. Anyway, uh, this is all speculation, I guess, as we wait for a little more action in this first match. But for now, it's dual lanes for newbie. They have rotated their Sand King up top. They'll leave just the Skyrath Mage bottom to try and control the Centaur. And uh, IG, interested to see if they go for an, a rotation of any kind. Actually, no smokes on their supports right now, which does surprise me a little bit, just given how strong they are. But hey, if they can find these kills on Hal, it's worth it. Although here, he will leap away to safety. Yeah, this isn't the easiest uh, lane to kill Nirana with. They got her beforehand because she was far, uh, she was too far up the lane and they managed to flank her and force out the leap and then stun with Venge. Uh, but if they're coming from the front, it's fairly easy to uh, to dodge one of these stuns with leap. Speaking of which, Hal has leveled that up to level 2. I'm not sure if that was on purpose or not, but it's kind of an uncharacteristic build even for offlane Nirana. Yeah, we do see the jungle getting stra uh, stacked by Sang Shang, so... Creating an opening here for the Sand King to catch up later. Banana, meanwhile, 
Lurking in that new path off to the right side, which can often be used to gank this lane, but in this case, we'll just let him leech a little experience from a safe position. Uh, I do want to point out Moo is currently dominating 430 mid, but that may change now with the chains connecting. Wasn't able to melge dodge that, dodge that one, but he'll turn now with the meld, and 430's committed to this. Oh, he's got no bottle charges. Well, and comes the rotation, and Sang Chang will punish the dive. Mu baited him. Played him like a fiddle. And meanwhile, IG will take that tier 1 top. And that's one thing that newbie needs to be careful with at the same time. That It's really good that they get the turnaround kill mid, but these these heroes combined can take towers really fast. So Chisbug has gone for a 1-1-1 build so far in the Shrek, which is fairly common. I'm curious to see if he tries to go more of a pushing build or more of a fighting build, whether he maxes out Edict or Lightning or maybe even Split Earth. Uh, but as it looks right now, Lua will definitely be prioritizing Liquid Fire to take those towers. Top lane, Lua will get stunned up. I think he's pretty much dead. Yeah, concussive shot, the burrow's there. and Well, even though it's a slightly weaker slow on the concussive, it's more than enough to get in range for that follow-up stun with three boots out on the supports now. Jakiro a bit clunky in general. So, yeah, looking at the two solo lanes for Nubia, well, now they're solo lanes, I guess you would say. Rabbit is, with the help of the Scarath Mage early, he is now just completely dominating this offlane centaur, tripling his CS. The TA is doing quite well mid. Got the kill on the Ember Spirit with the, with the support rotation and... 4.30, uh, struggling in the CS department a little bit, though. Not as extreme as that bottom lane, so... Overall, the lane's going pretty well for Newbie outside of outside of giving up the early tower. And Bounty Rune going the way of Cheesebug. And an illusion to Banana, so... <laughs> it's just it's kind of weird to see this. Like, you, you don't know exactly what to expect just yet, but... I feel like giving the bounty runes to key supports early on can be really powerful. A hero like Lishrak benefits a lot from just getting that extra... How much experience is it at this point? It's like it's 80 or it's something? 50 like off at the first one. 50 spawning. plus 5 per minute, right? Yeah. So it's like 80 at this point he gets from that. It's like a it's creep not... and a half, roughly, which is oh. not bad. Stun on how, top lane. Oh, how put out here? Split Earth. Do they really want to dive this one? They're thinking about it, but how turns with an arrow? Chuan, if that hit him, probably would have gone down. Meanwhile, mid lane, 430. He'll be the real victim. He tries to throw out a remnant, but that's a slow remnant with the concussive shot and the trap affecting him, and he will end up going down. At least he did throw out the remnant, though, so now he doesn't need to use a TP scroll to get back to lane, which, by the way, are a lot cheaper now, so... That's true. 100 gold Looking instead of 135. Fast progression out of that. One thing that I'm, I'm noticing is these ancients. The one, my one thing I to jump down to me is just how. Oh, mid lane. Jump on the Moo. Chains will come through. The Sentry Wars drop down, so Moo can't meld dodge this. Now gets held in position, slowed down by the wards, and the chase is on. Fresh Refraction was used, but not sure if it's enough to save him. They'll end up getting the kill. 430 on the way out with the Sleight of Fist, trying to retreat. Gosh, everybody in the mid lane, it's a party. As five heroes for newbie descend on this one, and it was a total of four. Or, sorry, three in the end for IG. June. Assisting from afar with the Stampede. Yeah, this Tide is getting huge. He's now 20 CS ahead of the highest farmer on the Dire side. So Rabbit is really getting everything he wants right now. He sent out an item. He's going for Mech first here. Uh, still missing the recipe, so he's about 700 away from a very fast Mech Arcanes here. I guess he will be getting a Blink next after that. That's a common build, but... There is, of course, also the uh, possibility that he goes Mech Pipe and just lets the Sand King be the initiator with the Blink Dagger because Pipe is absolutely amazing against the Dire lineup. Yeah, and it's it's an item that for a while was kind of ignored, but very, very potent item in general. But, but that was more when teams were grouping. And Although these lineups look like they could play out that way, I'm, I'm wondering if we'll see that same style with all the other changes in the patch. So um, I'm kind of kind of reserving... Reserving my judgment, I suppose, as, as we all are for this patch, and um, just the the way, it, as far as how T's will approach it. So three heroes smoked out for IG, and they make their move, thinking towards mid, but now backing off a bit. Newbie will farm their own woods, and Chuan will lead the way here. Already level four, about to move up the ramp. He has taken a single point R and Wave of Terror, and he might run into Sang Chang now. Now he waves of terrors to the south. Now Banana comes back in, gets a two-hero burrow off. Moo has arrived as well. Is he going to charge into this one? There's a magic missile. Liquid fire follow-up. Now they'll stampede, but they stampede into a ravage. Rabbit was waiting in the wings. Kills off one. Moo will be finished off by a double damage 430, who now is on the chase. Two-hero burrow through from Banana. Cheesebug caught out. The centaur joins the fray as well. Cheesebug's going to live. The urn healing him up very quickly there, and will end up surviving. 
IG find quite a few kills. Rabbit now walking back in. Can he salvage this fight for his team is the question. Doesn't look like it. They'll try and jump on him. Anchor Smash will be available. And he'll hit all four. Looking for Luo. Dropping him low. Oh Long range earn charge. Almost saving him, but not quite. Oh, man. That cheese yeah, poker and already paid for itself. IG than I would have thought. That was a three-man Ravage, but they didn't really combine their abilities too well. Sanking used his Burrow Strike as the opener, and I don't think he got a second one off. Arrow was never used, which was the bigger puzzle for me in that fight, to be honest. Those... Hal had plenty of opportunities, I feel like, to just throw out an arrow and lock down a target, unless it wasn't cooldown when he showed up, or at least he had one in the end again that he wasn't using, but... Newbie definitely got the worst end of that fight, and with that fight as well, June suddenly has a Blink Dagger on Centaur, and that's after being pretty much dominated in the lane. He still has it at 10 minutes after getting two kills right there, so... Yeah, let's not forget, this guy was getting, was getting tripled up on CS in the lane, but one good fight and the Blink comes out. And it was, it was not an overwhelming lead by any means, a 2k gold lead, but with that convincing victory, IG, they storm back into this game, and now they can look for a, their second tower bottom. They do have a very good pushing lineup. And with no Ravage and no Blink on Sand King, I'm, I'm really not seeing Newbie contesting this one, Send. The thing is, let's see if Newbie have looked at the changes here. They will yep. glyph. Okay. Because <laughs> when your tier 1 tower is destroyed your Glyph refreshes, so you should always Glyph the tier 1, right? Now they have Glyph again, so... There was no... You just delay the enemy team for those seconds, basically, and now you do it for free, so there's less misuses on the tier 1s, I guess. In the past, teams would sometimes use the Glyph and then regret it after, but on tier 1s, you can use it with a lot of safety now, so... Yeah, well, it's a, it's a right. why not kind of thing. These towers are going to be falling fast. Uh, Leshrac did only take one point Edict, though. He's maxing out the Lightning and Split Earth, kind of going for a hybrid build that we see sometimes here. Um, mm -hmm. And Luo will be maxing Liquid Fire. I think maybe it's just a... It would be overkill, perhaps, to max both. I don't think it's necessary here uh, to have a high-level Edict when you have Liquid Fire. So perhaps it's for the better. They have a lot of control, at least. Rabbit's going to Rabbit has a mech, though. He also has Rabbit, but he gets caught by an Ice Pad. Mech is there. Ravage may turn this June, dropping low. Can they finish off the kill? They will with the last Lightning. Now Moo's isolated, caught out by the 430 Ember, run over by IG as they start diving for kills. Looking for how Epicenter from Banana? Will it find anyone? It's just out of range. They're kiting and controlling him. While well, this Epicenter fails to connect, 430 Silence, he gets burrowed under the enemy tower. He's really diving for these kills, but it's working out beautifully. So far, IG yet to be punished for their extreme aggression. Three heroes dropped for newbie, and that was with the Ravage coming out. And with the mech advantage, which IG only just now picked up, the recipe not yet delivered. Yeah, it's funny to see it once again. I feel like I saw that exact fight just a moment ago. <laughs> <laughs> Like, again, a great Ravage coming out from uh, from Rabbit. He even got the mech off. He got everything off he needed to in that fight, but the follow-up just wasn't really there. It's a four-man Ravage, but there wasn't a Burrow Strike. Banana wasn't in position until it was too late. There was no mood dealing damage during the Ravage. They didn't have the Sky Rifle come off, I think, even in that fight. And once again, the arrow from Howe didn't connect. It flew over the enemy targets. So again, Another team fight going the way of IG, 3 to 1, and they get the tower. Now, perhaps there's a turnaround here. Ferrari's taking a lot of damage, but Stampede will give him some space here. Uh, actually, has a haste turn at 430, so he can just keep on chasing Sang Chain out, and one more auto attack will bring down the Skyrat. The rest of Newbie trying to run their way out. Your Sand King very close to his Blink Dagger may go down here. He will do a Lightning Storm. He was a 200 gold away. Oh, actually, no, I guess it was 300 with the new, the new cost of the Blink, but now we'll make it 500 away from that Blink. IG pushing in the mid lane. Arrow to fly, Cheesebug just kind of watches it harmly, harmlessly passed by him, and IG, keep the pressure up. Live again. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't call it a death ball strat by any means, Sin, but it's, it is interesting to see this level of pushing aggression working out so well for IG. It was once a 2,000 gold deficit, suddenly a 3,000 gold lead, and with all these towers, oh, they're they claiming no surprising, but 430 gets caught up by now. Still, Stampede will be enough to save him. Moo's now the one in trouble. Sleight of Fist will come through. Banana needs a good burrow here, and it's a damn good one. Three heroes caught out. Rabbit still chasing IG. Don't overextend now. This will be extremely costly if you do. 430 and Chuan on the run. Luo might get blocked in by his own creeps. They decide to pursue the Jakiro. They will get some nice return kills. And IG continue to jump out and man look at that jump up just from those two kills jeez that's like a 15 yeah, so the way swing. the way it works now with uh, 
AOE experience and AOE gold for ganks is that it's relative to the difference in net worth and net experience between the two teams. So when, when one team starts getting a lead, you get way more for winning a fight against them than you did before. And at the same time, you get less if you're ahead than you used to, right? Or is it only you get more when you're behind? No, I, I believe it's both. So like if you're if you're waiting really hard and then you get a kill, that kill is not worth as much as if... Um, or it's worth less than what it normally would be if it was okay. more of an even game. That's my understanding of it. Um, so I, I think you are correct in saying that. Okay. So, yeah, that just these two kills, like you said, really giving a big spike here. And it's just IG overextending there, I guess. There, there was no point in staying there. They, they've used many of their key abilities. They, I think they reset with the Stampede there, actually. As you pointed out earlier, it wasn't a Stampede that made Ferrari go fast. He had a haste rune, but after that Stampede reset, perhaps they should have just got out of there. Uh, instead of trying to fight that. They have a great reset mechanism in uh, in the Ice Path. Just Ice Path, Stampede, and even Lightning Storm just to slow down the enemies, then you can get out. Um, for those asking, guys, there is no fight recap in the live games. There's, see, there's no there's no bar here. I can't go back. There's no DVR functionality. That is only in Dota TV. So I believe this tournament is actually free to watch if you if you want. I'm not 100% sure on that. But yeah, we, we don't have access to that one. So blink it for June's June. going to go, go in completely for whiffing that stomp. This could be costly if Newbie can get the counter initiation, but they don't have a blink. They can chase with the Templar Assassin traps, but they're only level one, so still the 11 second cooldown. But Luo gets caught up by an arrow, it went straight down the middle lane. A nice exchange for Newbie. And do they go back in here? Chuan is in a position to try and do it, but. They have Ravage, they have Blink Burrow. Oh, he used the Epicenter on Banana. I think he might have misclicked that one oh, a little bit geez. earlier. They did not need that to get the kill. I didn't uh, even see it. At least it's been on cooldown for 30 seconds, so I think he might have used it even before that, anticipating that a team fight was going to break out, but IG just reset and got out, so. But nevertheless, Newbie do get a kill here. Um, start taking a little bit more control of their own jungle. They counter ward it. They now place a defensive ward themselves as well here. And, yeah, I mean, so far so good for, honestly, both teams. It's... When you look further into this game, you're expecting the mid game to be kind of explosive from Newbie. They have two great teamfight ultimates between Sand King and Tide. They have Templar Assassin, who generally starts really coming online when she gets either the BKB or if it's a non BKB game, either a Desolator or a Yasha or a combination of those items. And Mirana is also going places. So IG's late game is almost all eggs into one basket Ferrari in this game. It feels like the two other cores, Centaur and, and Jakira will kind of fall off or be not important enough, I think. And Ferrari's farm isn't that good, so yeah, look at I this. do will need to get some better In fights. comparison, you look at Mu, 88 CS already, and you know, not only did they have a nice, t a couple of nice turn kills mid, but he has really kept the CS up this game, and it means if they manage to claim these tier 1 towers, currently IG with a 3 tower advantage, maybe will be hugely on top, assuming there's no fights against them during that time, so he'll go for a BKB here, Sind, and there's really not much answer to this BKB. There's level 2 Edict, but generally Lashrak standing close to TA with a BKB is a recipe just to get meld and quickly killed off, and well, Mu will get close to that, but for now it looks like he's actually going to deny the tower mid lane. They don't have a Glyph available in time, and they're afraid IG might just try and force this one. Looking at the IG lineup, one other thing I guess worth mentioning is they're not really the best Russian lineup. They have Liquid Fire, they have Venge, which is decent. But hmm. they do have that dire advantage, well, to whatever extent it is now with the new patch. I guess that remains to be seen. Uh, at least it's, see, it is a bit closer to their towers, so I'm wondering if they'll try and force that at some point. Can you check if the glyph is on cooldown for the Radiant for you? It is for me. Yeah, it's on cooldown. Okay, so that's really interesting. So if you deny your tower, you don't get a new glyph. Oh, it's only for the tier 1s. Right? Oh, it was a tier 2 he denied. Yeah, mind. I'm so tier okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he denied a tier 1. I was really confused, okay, because I, th I would think that would be a bug then. Yeah, uh, sure I think I think it's just because it was a tier two. I, I don't know how it works if. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, I, he, if it was if it was a tier one, he could have just glyphed when they pushed in. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so Nubi will push in the mid lane in the meantime, and IG can try and slow this one down. And they'll take this tower mid lane glyph all, was already used, but they'll get a new one. As How tries to catch up as well, and this will be a secondary glyph. They're gonna try to push for high ground during this time. Moonlight shadow from How. June is in position to try and stop this. Tower's very close to being killed off, and the question is if he goes for it. The meanwhile, the rest of Nubi have TP back, trying to hunt out IG, and how will go back in for the tower, killing it off under cover of Moonlight Shadow. Then they also look to pursue out Chuan, 
and Lil, they'll catch two without the Centaur here. It's a difficult fight for IG. Banana going through with the Burrow Strike, but now the turn with the Sleight of Fist. Since Spud suddenly Sunshine finds himself in way too deep. Instant Ankh or uh, Kraken Shell, not enough. 430 oh, finding two kills, the double chains, and a lightning splashy through. Do they try and go for high ground here? They're trying for it. 430 is really committing to this. Throws out the Spirit the other direction. And still Moo, smashing him down with those meld crits. Although back off for now. He gets earned up and... Do they continue this push is the question. There's still an Epicenter online. Yeah, they should be aware that Epicenter is still there. So going in now I think is a big mistake. They don't have Stampede to disengage. They don't really have that good push apart from Jakiro who's currently in the mid lane. So I think going high ground now from, uh, from IG could be really costly and especially well, it is a pretty even game right now in terms of golden experience, so a mistake right now is not as big as if you're ahead in terms of how much you give to the enemy, but either way, I think if they push high ground now, they are going to lose this fight to, uh, to Newbie's lineup. Any sort of good arrow setup, uh, especially with Moon out with a BKB on TA who can just kind of run in and ignore everything, this is going to be difficult, but it looks like they're going to try. They're still sitting on that three tower advantage, and despite that, it's pretty much a dead even game going by the numbers at any rate, and... If they lose a fight and towers get clear, oh, oh arrow onto Tron. Mystic Flare there to follow it up. Can he swap himself out to safety in time? Rabbit caught out, but still stands strong through this fight. Now popping the mech as an epicenter is unloaded onto 430, but he simply zips out. Now that you try to use Stampede to retreat, Slide of Fist crashing through again, and the slow from the Lash Rack Lightning, the fight from the high ground. IG using the terrain to their advantage here. They'll turn on Moo, Blinky back in with the stun. Another Slide of Fist, another double searing chain. Starfall dropping everyone so, so low. One more Liquid Fire on a Rabbit. Will it be enough? Another Slide, 430. He finishes off the Tidehunter. He gets himself a lot of gold there. Actually, the Jakiro getting the last hit. Oh, IG. They're playing with fire here, but they're just barely coming out on top in these fights. Yeah, and they even forced a buyback out of Rabbit there, and will probably retreat now. Great, great fight from IG. They managed to win that fight basically four on five, right? Because Venge got killed off in the start, and there was a TA with BKB running into them, but they just... They backed off with the Stampede, they bought some time, and eventually, like you said, they used the high ground to their advantage. Ferrari got so much work done considering how heavily pressured he was in the beginning of the fight, just using range to his advantage. And if they get Roche too now, they're looking really, really good. There's a Battle Fury as well. This is exactly what IG needed. Ferrari wasn't doing too well in the farm department. He now has 4 CS per minute. He's going to get the Aegis. He got a couple of kills and a lot of assists in the last few fights. And I want to point out that Lashrak is 8, 1, and 8 and has 3.6k gold. And he can transition into pretty much a core at this point with this much gold in 22 minutes. I'm curious to see what he goes for. Maybe BKB is, is a good choice. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, sometimes we see even like the, the Bloodstone, but do, do you think he just needs the magic immunity this game? There's, um, there's also the, Aghanim Scepter, which we were discussing earlier. Ags is really good, but he hasn't skilled his ultimate, so oh, it's kind of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> underwhelming. Well, he'll go um, for a BKB. Well, it keeps his options open for now, but probably going BKB with the Silver Club. It counters pretty much the entirety of Newbie, with the exception of TA. But TA right now doesn't have any damage items. Uh, Moo will not be able to kill off the Lishrak in within a reasonable time frame. He has 1100 health and 6 armor on the Lesh, so... I think Mu will need the Meld Strike and an additional three or four hits, not even uh, counting the Magic Wand that the Leshrac has too. And Narana, the same story, has a BKB, no damage items. It's, I think it's the best choice here for, uh, for Chizbug, and I would be surprised if he goes for something else. Yeah, and with the Ember Spirit also picking up a Battle Fury, it's, it's not like these BKBs make you immune to damage by any means, so... I am, I am going to be curious to see how much 430 can accomplish in the upcoming fights. For now, newbie... They'll back off, and the big worry for them, Sin, is just map control. It's really putting a tax on these supports. Being forced to buy so many Sentry Wards to D-Ward to try and remove IG's vision on the map, and still it's IG making the aggressive plays. They're heading towards this Radiant bottom lane. Rapid sitting here, maybe even looking for a fight, though. Yeah, he will looking for a TP out. Oh, that was close. He could have been Yuled there. They stuck Lua around a long time, maybe. to be honest, but well, they'll, they'll back up in the end. But yeah... If you let, have a look at Rabbit, we saw how very quickly he got that mech. It was like 10 minutes. He has not made any item progression for like 15 minutes. We were expecting a blink to come way before 20, and he's not even close to it now at 24 after that buyback, after a couple of bad fights. And I think it's the one tool newbie really need that they don't have. They need the tide to be able to blink Ravage so they can set up with an epicenter. 
because, to be honest, we haven't had a single good epicenter in this game. And it's not because there hasn't been fights, and it's not because he hasn't had the blink, they just... They just didn't get the fights. They're letting Banana initiate with a Burrow Strike or follow up on the arrow. And I think that's a mistake. They have to they have to have that as the secondary team fight utility ability here. Man, Luo just walks right up to the front door. He knocks on it, he opens it, he peeks inside, and, and nobody's there to greet him. Gets off a liquid fire, backs off, they clear out the wave, and at some point you just gotta stop this or you're gonna lose your tier three tower uncontested. Again the sleight of fist coming through just Harassing Rabbit back a bit. Well, newbie wait. It, it's like they all want to jump in, but Moo will hide on the high ground. There's a sentry oh, ward a just arrived. Well, oh, a never mind. He's visible. <laughs> there's a sentry, and now they go in with the two hero stop coming out from June. It's a good way to start this fight. The BKB used by Cheesebug. He's gonna try to fight through this, but there's a little bit too much physical damage forcing him off the engagement. While 430 dives incredibly deep. He does have Aegis. Two hero chains. He'll lose the Aegis though. He might be in too far. Let's see if he can get out on the second life. A Sentry Ward dropped once again. 430 couldn't get off the change there. He was silenced during the, as the Slate of Fist ended. And IG will still push on for their first Slate of racks. Only 26 minutes in. Getting aggressive. Arrow clipping Chuan. Probably going down here to the meld. The gush fall up. A little bit too much damage. He can't live through it. Well, Rabbit begins the chase. Trap getting thrown out. Mystic Flare there as well. Jakir will use himself up in the air, but it almost allows Newbie to reset. Well, maybe they've gone in too far in their efforts to get that reset. 430 turns it again with the Slight of Fist. The double Searing Chains. Rabbit caught out. Epicenter's there, and it will lock down 430, finishing him off. And that ends a pretty decent streak, a dominating streak for him. Cheesebug. Oh, what a great out. TP. Still, with the tower falling... IG maintain a bit of a lead here, but Newbie get some new items. They pick up the, the Yasha, they now have 1,700 gold on Rabbit, and at the same time, you look at 430 nearly completing the Daedalus, so he is getting pretty scary on that Ember Spirit. They really yeah, do that. was still that really soon. expensive for Newbie. They used two buybacks. I'm not sure if you saw that, but both Mirana and the Templar Assassin buying back there. So not only do they lose gold on that, of course, but they also, they're clearing out this top lane. They're not getting gold for it. Because the buyback timers now are getting to that point where the the gold penalty actually lasts for a very long long duration here, and they didn't. I feel like these two buybacks were. I I don't want to call them wasted, but essentially, perhaps it would have been better to just buy back one of them. And I think Moo could have got the job done alone. I don't feel like Hal did too much with his buyback, and they need to be really careful not to make these mistakes. Because when you've bought back two heroes like this, if the next fight goes wrong, the game is over. You have two cores who can't buy back, then you're going to lose two lanes of Rex uh, to a level 4 Edict and the Liquid Fire at this point in the base. They even used the Glyph, I believe, beforehand. So, yeah, just three minutes on that. This Siege could end the game if Newbie makes any sort of misstep. Yeah, and regarding the Marana, she's buying back with a BKB, which was on cooldown, had just used the 10 second duration. So, at that point, you you pretty much offer nothing to your team aside from an Arrow and, and Star Storm, which I think, like you said, didn't accomplish a ton. So they'll keep on pushing in. IG looking to find that second round of kills. Daedalus not picked up just yet. To the north will wait Sang Cheng. They'll find a chain's initiation. The follow-up stuns are there on move, but they don't really want to commit onto him. They'll back off as the trap slows down the retreat of Cheesebug. IG still content to slow siege this one. Not trying to force it too far. Moonlight Shadow will be wearing off. They do have a blink dagger on Tidehunter now. He just managed yeah, to pick this up. He has to get a good blink ravage now. And there's only the one BKB on Cheesebug, so this could potentially be big. Let's see if Chuan gets caught, or maybe with the level 2 swap can even keep a teammate alive. Arrow, fishing. Uh, it's a pretty far ways out, even if it does hit. They're not going to go. Patient hold from Newbie. And IG just are not giving up. They are just brute forcing this middle lane, man. Or, sorry, this bottom lane. I think the big play here, if it works like we expect, is to earn the Tide and then swap someone else into the fight and just kill them off. Because Tide can't blink when Arrow he's earned. strike in. Like Arrow to follow oh. this up. Now the Ravage comes through. They didn't stop Rabbit's initiation. He caught everyone. Now Cheesebug will BKB, but Shakiro's out of the picture. That means no mechanism, no Yule Scepter for this fight. 430, trying to retreat. The chase is onto him. They catch him with an Epi. The Burrow Strike follows it up. The defensive swap, simply inadequate. Way too short range. So he'll buy back on the Ember and he'll try to win this 
fight in round number two. Dropping the remnant to retreat to a DP. 430 will soon be on his own in this engagement. It's only Cheesebug left here, but they've brought down three. The Murana with no buyback down for 55 seconds. Rabbit trying to hold his own with another anchor smash coming through. Mu drops low. 430. The flame guard picked up. It's an ultra kill for Mu, but 430 gets the triple. <laughs> Five kill, heroes kill, dead. Kill. Nine heroes fight. dead in this fight. Oh my goodness. It's got to feel so good being the last person inside the base and just knowing, well... Last man standing, man. Last man standing. The two cores who can do anything about me are dead, so I'll just... I think I'll just take the Rax myself. When is oh, the Scarf is coming. We can probably kill him as well. When is the last time you've seen an Ember Spirit... Oh, my, might even... Okay. 430. Gotta be careful here, man. This will be a dieback if of going down. He'll try to zip away, but Sanction continues pursuit. 430. In all kinds of trouble. Go for the TP out, but yeah, he'll be okay. Can't get a range for another nuke. But actually didn't get to uh, throw another flame guard, or, sorry, a fire run in, so he can't come back in the bottom lane, and this he didn't will be the, the defense of the melee barracks, I think. Unless this hero catapult can stop it. about HP left. It needs like two more shots. Nah, three more needed. Yeah, 430 was the last man standing there at the end, but... At the same time, Moo got an ultra kill, and he's now got 3,300 gold. Burrow Strike comes through on Luo. Stun onto Banana. They trying to finish this one off. The melee has a glyph, even. This is a nice bait from Newbie. As Shakira will use himself in the air. He needs another liquid fire going onto this, but it's still invulnerable. Now begins to tick down. Will that melee finally drop already? It will. IG claim it. Rabbit. Trying to hold his own. And now the BKB from Hal. Pursuing out Luo through the tree line. Snipes him with an arrow. 430. Back into the fight. He's hoofed it back. Blink forward. The stomp was on to Hal, thinking the BKB would end. But in fact, it did. They still end up getting the kill there. Magic Missile on Naboo. Follow-up damage from the Lash and the overrun Noopy. Driving them back to the well, in fact. IG. They never really had a huge lead, Sin. I mean, you look at just net worth this game, it was never remotely big. But they just kept on pushing, kept on sieging. And at long last, they've cracked one lane of racks. They're looking for a second. Yeah, they just executed better, I feel. They they took these kind of fights where they extended the fights long enough for Jakiro to get multiple ice paths off, get multiple slides of fist off, and oh, okay, Sunshine, you're really dead. Oh, and Rabbit even gets ice path too, but... Rabbit just there, the epicenter follow-up comes through, onto three, but 430 now arrives, he wasn't caught by any of these nukes, and he can look to turn this one, chasing onto Rabbit, we'll finish him off, that 780 crit, four dead, it's about to be a fresh wipe. The centaur gloriously stomps, and... Celebrates their victory. IG, one win away from knocking out your defending TI4 champions from from I League. They've got to win two in a row now to bounce back. Yeah, that was. If there's one thing I can uh, I can put a finger on from uh, from newbie, it's I feel like their biggest mistake in this game was just that they didn't seem to be exactly on the same page with when they wanted to fight and how they wanted to fight. I never saw a really good ravage into epicenter. Uh, we never really saw the arrows give them huge initiations. Maybe they got one kill and still lost the fight, even though they have better farm when you look at the last hits. So, I've, they just got out-executed in the team fights, which is interesting to see because one of the things that really carried Newbie throughout TI4 was that they were incredibly good at executing team fight strategies. But here, uh, of course, their team fight in TI4 was had a little bit more of a touch of push rather than uh, hitting a lot of AoE abilities and stuns, but. This lineup here was perfectly tailored to fight against the dire lineup, but they. I I think it was more an issue of newbie not playing up to their uh, their level than than IG just playing amazing. I don't know what you think. Yeah, they did feel there was there was also just like the timings were just off for them. They took like three or four fights when Banana didn't have blink, and that definitely set them back a lot. But it also didn't feel like the best TA game. Refraction was pretty ineffective this game. Having to rush a BKB is generally. I mean, it can work, but they just they didn't have initi blink initiation outside of Sand King's in. Like, Tidehunter got what at the end of the game, basically. TA just had to kind of run in, and then they just slowly retreat. Ember zips away, they swap teammates out, they stampede to reset. I thought that was key for IG, it was just having the stampede reset. Newbie just couldn't get enough done during Ravage. But, guys, with that, Game 1's in the books. We'll go come back soon for Game 2. You're watching iLeaks coverage by Beyond the Summit. Newbie versus IG continues after this. Stay tuned.